So let's look into the segment routing implementation. Segment routing divides the network path into segment. Hence, we have what we call the segment ID, SID, to this segment. So each of the segment, there will be assigned an SID. SID are allocated to forward node or agency link. In MPS, we are using a label, right? So in segment routing, we are using SID. The SID is based on agency link and the forwarding node. Hence, they reduce a lot of overhead because we no longer need to distribute label, but just assign SID. In this example, SID of the forwarding node are expressed in 1600X. So you can see from here, this is the SID uh, I have on router 2 and router 3 and router 5. So where X is a node ID. SID of the agency link are expressed as 101600XX. So as you can see here, we have a SID of 16023. So XX over here means it's a 2 and 3. Then we have 16035, which is the node number 3 and node number 5, where XX indicates the node ID on both ends. This is a simplified version uh, as compared to the MPS, where each of the FEC have one label. The second part of the implementation of a segment routing, SID of agency link and network node are arranged in order to form a segment list. Here you can see that I have a list. Right at the bottom, we have the data. We have a traditional IP address. Here you can see we have the uh, segment list, so which represent a forwarding path. So the segment list is encoded by the source node in the header of a data packet and transmitted with the data packet. The essence of the segment routing is instruction. So that's more important. So you can see that each of these have uh, this, uh, this label of uh, segment, which guide where and how the packet go. So if you look into this example, first I'm going to go into 03, so which is 1603, which is here. This is the first router I forward to. Then I'm going to go to 16035, which is here. Then I go to 16005, which is here. So as you can see that the information is already encoded in the header explicitly. Now we have two modes for segment routing deployment node. SR can be deployed with or without the controller. If a controller is used, the controller collect information, reserve the path resource, compute the path and deliver the result to the source node. This mode is preferred. So as mentioned, we can use segment routing even without a controller. But without a controller, we are using CLI, which means that the scalability may not be there, as well as we have to do a computation uh, by human. So which may not have the benefit of using the controller. For Huawei, the controller that can do the segment routing is called iMaster NCE. There are three protocols that they can use to connect to the router using segment routing. We can use a NetConf, which is a network configuration. You can use a PCEP, which is a path computation element protocol. And then we also can do a BGP LS, which is a border gateway protocol link state. So this is where we extend our uh, BGP. So for most benefit, if you want to use a segment routing, uh, please use iMaster and CE. So let's look into the SR application. At the beginning of the SR, I do mention that one of the benefit of SR is the service oriented. So segment routing can be used to easily specify packet forwarding path. On a live network, different paths can be defined for different services. In this diagram, you can see I have a data download, I have video, and I also have a voice. So all these have a different profile. Data download, we need high bandwidth. Video, we need low latency. And for voice, we need uh, the uh, lesser packet loss. So how we can actually uh, use segment routing for these three uh, application or services. In this example, three explicit paths are defined to implement service-driven network. 
the three paths are the green color, the red color, and the blue color. Now, each of these will have its own different path based on the eye master determine uh, which one have the highest bandwidth, lower latency, or the least packet loss. So the controller have all this information. So one for each data download, video, and voice services. Devices are managed by the controller, which can quickly provision path in real time. So the real benefit of using segment routing is the software control here. So I hope you have a good understanding, at least at high level, on what is segment routing is about. As a summary, uh, we are coming to the end of this course. This course reviewed the type and application of early WAN technology. We look into PPP, HDLC, ATM Framely, and describe the evolution of WAN from early circuit switching network to IP network. MPIS labels switching network and finally segment routing uh, network. With the development of network technology, network become more efficient and intelligent. So if you are really in the network, please give segment routing the focus because I believe segment routing will be the star in the future. The course also describes the implementation of PPP, include the parameter negotiation during the PPP link establishment, authentication negotiation, and the network layer uh, negotiation. Remember, we talked about the PPP link establishment, which is the LCP and CP. Then we look into authentication negotiation, which they can uh, support PAP and CHAP. Authentication is an optional configuration. And finally, we have the uh, network layer uh, negotiation, which is the IPCP. It analyzes in detail two PPP authentication, PAP and CHAP, and describe their working processes and uh, differences. We also look into PPPOE or PPP over Ethernet. It's the most widely used uh, PPP application by analyzing how PPP session is discovered, negotiated, established, and torn down. This course help you better understand the working mechanism and configure of PPPOE. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this uh, session and give you some uh, information. Thank you. Bye.